And I, I sat in a, some of the towns that are like, like Mound Bayou, Mississippi, which is just outside of Shelby, is like arguably one of the oldest black only incorporated towns in the country. Wow. Uh, and so I spent a good amount of time just sitting at the gas station with, with all these old black men. <laughs> yeah. Just talking. Yeah. And they had to gossip about every single person who pulled up the gas station. They had a story to tell me about that person. Yeah. And at the same time, tell me about the history of Mount Bayou. Like, it's a black only town, but at one point it had its own public swimming pool, its own public library. Then over time, all that stuff just went away as like the generations got older and the newer generations didn't care as much, lost the bank, lost the swimming pool, lost the library. And now it's a really poor, poor town. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the old heads sit around talking about the good old days and talk about when they had all that stuff and they're doing all that. And sort of talking about how these young folks don't like doing that kind of stuff, don't care about fighting for those kind of things. You know, what happened to us when we stopped wanting to fight for those things? Yeah, got too comfortable, man. Like, <laughs> the, the, those things, like, it's it's a it's a great, it's a great point, but I, I got this, I think that they made, not, when I say they, I think compared to now, compared to then, the, 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 the standard of living is higher compared to then, because, you know, Back then, everybody didn't even have running water, um, electricity. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of things that today is like, what you mean you don't have a sink and a toilet? And, you know, all these things that make life a bit more palatable. But, you know, again, like just a generation ago, those things were, weren't an automatic. Everybody didn't have plumbing everybody didn't have electricity <laughs> but now today that's that's a standard even for you know wherever you stay so that yeah that and i think it's in, by design you feel what i'm saying like i, th I think it's, it's by design and make make people but so comfortable to where it's like ah they don't want any more than what they have right now perfect and then yeah boom cap it at that <laughs> But, but okay, so I appreciate you sharing those details. Like Mississippi, man, it, it does, like just saying the name, like <laughs> I, I get just certain feelings just saying the name. It's, it, it's a place, but at the same time, it has so much history and especially for Black Americans, a very rich population and history of folks in that area. So I appreciate you mentioning that. And 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 so before you so when you were working on that food truck and you started i guess getting getting into that to you know that side of things how old were you again at this time i was 16 16 and when you had that experience on the food truck did you stop working around food and restaurants at any point or was that always something that was like a constant as you went finish high school and college before you got to the mortgage industry no I, after that i stopped i didn't work in the food industry like in the restaurant industry again after that until until i started mike d's barbecue uh, but i always knew i wanted to get back to it right like that like i was happy doing that like i was happy running a food truck by myself doing all that stuff and I knew that at some point I'd get back to that in life. I didn't know when, but I knew at some point I had to get back to well, it. Well, like, what what do you remember enjoying about running a food truck at that age? Just everything, right? Like, because there'd be times where I would be taking the orders, turn around, fixing the food, and, and putting out the window, just running the whole thing by myself. Uh, and then, you know, there'd be busy times where he was there helping still, too. But, like, just the way people get happy when they eat good food, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, I need to do that. And, like, I liked... That's when I started to develop, like I liked feeding people, right? I liked to cook something and give it to somebody and they'd be like, that's good, right? And that's like, I needed to keep getting that feeling. So that's what I wanted to get back to, just like the idea of feeding people. That's when I really noticed that like food can bring people together, right? Yeah. Like food makes people stop all the other stuff and just talk about how good this is. And then you can start, you can relate to somebody. You can start having a conversation. And I knew that was the thing about food that I had to get back to one day. Mm, word. And so... In the in the short term, are you starting to hone in on your skill set as a hobby, like around the crib, starting to get a little grill, charcoal here or there? Like, are you are you starting to 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 dive in in that respect, or are you not even really even picking it up as a hobby? At, at that age, I wasn't even picking it up as a hobby. Like once I started working on the food truck, I didn't really like get back into it until I was like in my twenties. 
uh, it was it was almost 10 years later that I started doing it again. And then it was like a hobby. Then I was like buying grills for the backyard and starting to do all that stuff.